granted. Hey guys, my name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with the Royal Family International University School of Identity and Lifestyle. And this is the Master Trainer Series. And today we're going to be talking about how the Holy Spirit uses us and uh, the growth that comes with listening to the Holy Spirit and what it is that He's trying to do through us in our walk. Um, one thing that I run into the most when I talk to believers and Christians who want to walk in the manifestation of the kingdom or whether it be the power of God or a move of God is that they always ask for a double portion. They'll always ask for more of what it is that the scriptures tell us we already have. And what's very interesting is that we never really think about uh, the person that we need to become through the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is our teacher and he's teaching us to to steward something. He's teaching us to walk out who we are in Christ. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself, but he only speak of Jesus and what it is that was given to him. So what I find very interesting is that sometimes we as believers forget that the role of the Holy Spirit is to teach us to become the person who can walk out everything that we're asking for. So if you're asking for a double portion of something, uh, what is it that you're really asking for? You're asking for a double portion of what? A double portion of power, a double portion of things, a double portion of knowledge and wisdom. And so the question would be, what are you doing with this double portion that you're getting? What are you gonna do with this double portion? Like for instance, um, you know, when you run a ministry, you have a household, and if you ask for a double portion, you're going to have two households. So it's not about having the two households. It's about being able to pay the rent on two households. It's about being able to keep your mind together and being able to, um, to establish uh, both realities. When I say both realities, there's be able to take care of one home and be able to pay the rent, the light, the gas, and be able to pay the rent, the light, and the gas in the other home and, and being that person that can steward that. And now if you ask for a double portion, now you're gonna have instead of one car, you're gonna have two cars, right? And so now you don't just pay the insurance on one car, you gotta pay insurance on two cars. Now you don't gotta change the tires on one car, you gotta change the tires on two cars. Now we're asking for a double portion of, of everything that we have. So it's not about getting, it's about being able to steward. And you know, one of the things I always tell people is that if you only have $100 in your bank, that's because that's all you can steward at the end of the month. You can only steward $100. Now, you can ask for a million dollars, but at some point you're always gonna end up with the last $100 because it's about what you can steward. And so really Holy Spirit is trying to guide us and teach us how to walk out who we're supposed to be in Christ. That way we can steward these things. Now, what's very interesting is that when we're out there laying hands on the sick, and we see miracles, manifestations, what kind of mindset does it take to steward what it is you just saw? What, what kind of um, mental capacity do we as Christians need to have? I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say um, um, you were here in this room and I was to ask you, hey, uh, do you wanna see 100% miracles? And you would say yes. And then I would ask you, what kind of person does it take to steward a hundred percent miracles. What kind of mindset does it take? What kind of mate do you need to have? Your children, your friends, your family, uh, your job. What is it that, that you need to grow in to be able to manifest a hundred percent of the healings and the hundred percent of the miracles? And another question that I would ask is, is, you know, how come we never ask for a hundred percent peace or a hundred percent patience or a hundred percent long suffering and the reason we don't ask for 100 percent in these things is because we believe that you know because jesus went around laying hands on the sick and he healed everyone that you know we're going to get 100 percent. but the reality is is that jesus was who he was 100 percent. so if you want to get 100 percent, you have to walk out who jesus is 100 percent, which means we have to walk out the character of christ and who he is on a daily mentally physically and emotionally so here's what i find very soon when you're out there laying hands on the sick 
and you don't see anything. You know, what kind of mindset do you need to have uh, to be able to steward what it is that you carry to the next person that you're going to go lay hands on? Because obviously you didn't see the miracle happen here. So if you didn't see the miracle happen here, do you carry that failure? Do you carry that doubt to the next person? And now you're struggling with these doubts and these thoughts and these emotions. And now you're laying hands on the sick. And now you're asking yourself, is this going to happen? Is it not going to happen? What's going on? And now you're getting lost into what we call the carnal mind. You start going into what we would call a carnality. And now you're trying to make things happen instead of allowing God to be who he is. So it's more about becoming who he called you to be. And one of the things that I always tell my students is you got to get in the character. Not that you're acting, you're putting on the character of Christ because it says you put off the old man and you put on the new. And so when you put on the character of Christ it means that you have to have the mindset of Christ, which the Bible tells us that we have the mind of Christ. And so what kind of mind do we need to have to be able to steward everything that's been given to us. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4 tells us that we're, the, that we're the stewards of the mysteries of God, which means that nine times out of 10, you're not even going to understand what it is you carry. And so the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you to become the person who can manifest the moves of God, because we know that it's the Holy Spirit working through us. We know that it's the Christ in us, that we're strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. And so we know that Christ is coming forth. So what kind of mindset does it take? What kind of character do you need to have? Uh, what kind of realities can you bring out once you understand who you are in Christ? And that's one of the things that I want to be talking about next. One of the things that we run into the most is when, uh, when I go out on the streets and I have uh, students with me or I have someone who's walking with me and they want to see the moves of God or the manifestation or the fruits of the Spirit and I'm out there and nine times out of ten you have believers that get tired of not seeing anything. And so they, get, they come to the point where they get a little frustrated because, you know, the Bible does say that you'll see these things. The Bible does say that God is faithful. The Bible does say that believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so, you know, you get people that get a little frustrated because they know who their God is. They know their word. They know they're believing. They know they're trusting and they're not seeing anything manifest. So the question is, how can I get this to manifest? How can I get the miracle to move? How can I get this mountain to move? I'm speaking to it. And the issue here is that it's not about us manifesting a miracle. It's about us manifesting a son, manifesting who Christ is in every circumstance. So it's not just about seeing the miracle. It's about becoming the person who can manifest every move of God, whether it be physically, emotionally, spiritually, in every area of your life. And it's about stewarding that identity. So I run into men of God, women of God that come out, we go out on the streets and they say, you know, um, should we go up to this person? Should we go up to that person? And sometimes you run into people, maybe this is you because this was me. You'll say, uh, God, just send me one person, you know, show me who I should minister to. Uh, you know, maybe you'll do a treasure hunt. I know people do treasure hunts. So sit down and, and they'll look for certain things because they want to make, you know, they want to have a good time out of it and, and have some fun with it. And that's okay if that's what you want to do. But the reality is God wants us to speak to everyone because God is a relational God and he wants us to have relationships with people. And what ends up happening is we make it about manifesting the miracle. We make it about laying hands on someone and seeing God move. Nine times out of 10, it's not about seeing God move. It's about us moving towards the call and the realities that God has laid out for us in Christ. And so what I mean by that is like I've said before, it's about manifesting his realities through us first, right? We manifest love, peace, joy, faithfulness, long-suffering, goodness, self-control. You know, the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians uh, 5.22, talks about the fruits of the Spirit. It's about uh, manifesting the fruits of the Spirit. And the reason I say this is because the Holy Spirit teaches you to walk out the character of Christ. We think that Holy Spirit comes because, you know, the Bible tells us that when the Holy Spirit comes, we receive power. But the Bible says that he gave them who believe the power to become the sons of God. So it's about you becoming more like Christ as you're walking this thing out. It's not about getting more results. It's about becoming the results of who Christ says he is in your life. And that takes time. And this is why the Holy Spirit teaches us. And we got to allow the Holy Spirit to mentor us, to train us, 
to build us up. We have to talk to him on a daily. We have to say, okay, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And in the kingdom of God, you don't get to fail. You get to take the test over and over and over again until you get it right because God is not going to fail you because remember, we are seated in Christ, which means that we are in victory, coming from victory, not heading to victory. So everything that we do is already in victory. So it's about us manifesting what that victorious walk looks like. But in the spirit, we're already victorious in every areas of our life. And so what's happening is we're allowing well, what 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 says, we, we take possession of our vessel, which means that we possess the way we think, we possess the way we talk, we possess the way we function, we possess the way we maneuver in this world by possessing everything that we thought we were and bringing it into submission to who Christ says we are now. And so that means if you're feeling doubt, you take that thought, thought captive. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, which means that when you have these thoughts and they're not obedient to Christ and they're going against the thoughts that God has for you, and it goes against the word that says, oh, you know, when you lay hands on this person, this might not happen. We know that that's totally against the word of God because the word of God says that believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So right away, you take these thoughts captive and you say, no, that's not what the word of God says. And you lay hands on them anyway. And then what will happen is that amazing thing that you got between your shoulders, which is called the brain, which is called the carnal mind, will start saying, well, you know, if it is of God, this person would be healed. Maybe it's not God's will. And once again, you got to stand against those very thoughts because the Bible tells us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And so what we have to do is we have to take these things captive. We have to stand on the word of God. And we have to push through it and still honor God in everything that we do. And like I tell people, it's not about getting the manifestation. It's about honoring God even when you don't get the manifestation because it's about manifesting who we are. Now, this is win-win because what ends up happening is if you lay hands on the sick and you don't see somebody recover, just tell yourself this. Jesus said, blessed are those that don't see yet believe. So you still have to believe. So if you lay hands on the sick on someone and they don't receive a healing and you walk away and you say it's done and you still believe it, that means you're going to be walking away blessed because that's what you want. You want to walk away blessed every single time. If you start questioning what it is that's going on, now it's not about you trusting God and trust means faith, which means you're putting your faith in God, you're putting your faith in Christ, you're putting your faith in the word of God, you're putting your faith in everything that he's asked you to do through his spirit. And so now you're trusting that you're doing your part and he'll do his. The issue here is because we don't see it. Now we don't honor God. We question God and now we walk away totally defeated. And that's one of the things that Holy Spirit's trying to teach us. He's trying to teach us not to walk away defeated, but to walk away with our heads high to say, you're learning. You're growing. I'm trying to teach you who you are even in this. It's not about always seeing the victory. It's about being in victory even when you don't see victory. And I know that sounds a little strange and a little odd, but Jesus was on the cross. It didn't look victorious to the normal eye. But if they'd have known that they'd crucified the king of glory, they wouldn't have crucified him. So to the normal eye, he looked like he was defeated. When they put him in the grave, he looked like he was dead. He looked like he wasn't going to get up. So it's not about what we're seeing. It's not about what we're seeing. It's not about what we're perceiving. It's about what the word of God says. And so we have to stand on the word. Stand there for That's why we put on the armor of Christ. And the armor of Christ is so we can stand on the word of God. And he says that he raises his word above his name. So we have to stand on those things. So as we're moving along, as we're going out on the streets, as we're laying hands on people, because the Bible says, as you go, right, as you go. And so as we go, we're constantly aware that we're being trained. We're constantly aware that we're being molded in every situation. We're constantly aware that every circumstance we run into is a training ground for the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us into all truth, which means that yes, even though you didn't see it and that might be true, that's not the truth. 
It's true that he's in a wheelchair, but the truth is the word of God says that he's faithful. It's true that this person is homeless, but the word of God says that he has a kingdom and he has a father and he has a hope and he has a glory and his name is Jesus. So that's the truth. And it's the truth that sets you free, not what's true. That's why we don't rely on what we see. That's why uh, the scriptures go on to say that we don't see anyone according to the flesh because of that. So when you're out there on the streets and you feel like you have to play catch up, I'm gonna, catch up is when, you, um, when you've been working Monday through Friday and you haven't had time to really go and minister, which means you've just been uh, doing your job and now come Tuesday or Wednesday, now that you're, you feel like you need to go minister, now you go out there on the streets and you're basically looking for that one or two or three people that you can minister to. I call that playing catch up because the reality is you should have been doing that all week. You should have been talking to someone at work. You should have been talking to your boss. You should have been talking to people at the gas station. You should have been constantly aware of what it is you carry. And you carry the Holy Spirit and you carry the promise and you you carry everything that Christ says you have. And that's how you minister. You do that everywhere you go. So if you're the person that plays catch up and says, well, this is the one day I'm going to go out there and minister, you kind of forgot what kingdom is all about. Kingdom living is a lifestyle. It's something that you do day in and day out. It's not something that you set aside for one day and then you just decide that you're going to do kingdom stuff and go find that one person because the reality is when you're in the kingdom, you're in a reality and this reality manifests every day of your life. What ends up happening is we get out of the kingdom of God mentally because Spiritually, you got out, but mentally, sometimes a lot of us get stuck. So we get stuck mentally in the things of this world as we're walking out, as we're going, even though the Bible says, as you go do these things. Now, as we go, we're in the flesh. Now, as we go, we're thinking carnally. Now, as we go, we're thinking about our jobs. We're thinking about things we got to do. We're worrying. We're stressing. And we kind of forgot that we were in the kingdom the whole time. But come the day that you're going to go minister, then you realize that you're going to go minister and give people everything that you thought you had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and now you want to give it to them, but you kind of forgot you had it all week. So what is it that you're actually giving them? That's a very interesting question. So it's a lifestyle. So what you do is when you get up in the morning, you realize that your whole life ministers. The best gospel preached is the one lives, so it's the way you're living. So when you get up in the morning, the first thing you do is you realize, okay, I am in a kingdom and I am walking out who Christ is on a daily with my children, with my wife, with my friends, with my neighbors, on the way to work, at the gas station, I'm constantly being a light. I'm constantly asking them if they need prayer. I'm constantly letting them know that I'm here for them as I'm going. And then you go to the gym, right? And you got people there and you talk to them. And so your whole life ministers now. And so now you're not walking around looking for that one guy to minister because you've been ministering all week long. Now imagine how many people you could reach if you minister to people all day long the rest of your life. Imagine going to a restaurant and just deciding that, hey, you know what? I'm going to walk out the kingdom of God today. And instead of just focusing on your meal and focusing on yourself and being the needy person, you realize I'm needed in this place because I carry the Christ. And there are people in this room that need what Jesus has. And when you take that mind off, you take the old man off and you put the new man on and you realize Hey, I can really give people what it is that Christ has. And so now you change your focus, you change your mindset, and now it's about you being needed, right? Lord, you need me to help them. Not that he needs you per se, but that the people around you need what it is that Christ has given you because he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness, which means that these things aren't just given to you, They're given to you so you can go and give them to other people. And so as you're living your life, as you're taking your kids to school, as you're going to the market, as you're buying gas, as you're shopping, as you're doing these things, you're aware that the Holy Spirit is training you on a daily to walk out the character of Christ. So now when you lay hands on the sick, it isn't just about manifesting the miracle. It's also about manifesting the one who carries the miracle. So now when they receive the miracle, you can give them not just a move of God, but you can give them the Christ in you by telling them, hey, 
I did this because Christ loves me and he lives in me. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. And that same spirit can live in you. And that's what the ministry of Jesus Christ is all about. It's about dying and being resurrected into a new life. Now faith is. And so that's what it's all about. And some people want to play catch up because, you know, they haven't ministered all week and they come with me and I'm sitting there, I'm relaxed. I'm like, why are you so relaxed? Don't you feel like you got to run to this guy and run to that guy and look at that person, this and that. I said, I'm not playing catch up because I do this every day. This is my life. This is a lifestyle. And that's kind of odd to some people because we've been taught to turn it off and turn it on. There isn't no turning this thing off. This thing's on the minute you gave your life to Jesus. And so it's a lifestyle. It's when you go up to people and they're, they're knocking you down with their words, when they're being negative, when they're being rude. These are opportunities that you are walking into that the Holy Spirit is teaching you to walk out the character of Christ in every circumstance. So if someone's yelling at you and getting upset, you ask Jesus, you say, all right, Lord, who are you for me right now in this situation? And that's why you were given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches you and guides you into all truth. And the truth is, you shouldn't get upset. The truth is, you should understand what's going on with that person. And that person doesn't know who they are. And that's why you've been put in front of them. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The Holy Spirit always leads us somewhere because we're being led of the Spirit. And nine times out of ten, he's going to lead you to people that are going to tempt you. And at that point is when you say it is written, which means that you are now agreeing with the word of God and you are now manifesting the word of God, which means now the word becomes flesh and you get to minister to them in a way that the Holy Spirit gets all the glory and all the credit. And it's a beautiful thing when you start realizing that everything that you run into in every situation and every person that you encounter is an opportunity for you to become everything that Jesus died and paid for in your life. We always ask Jesus to show up and he can only show up through you. Because after all, he made his abode in you. He lives in you. Christ lives in your heart by faith. So you put the trust that Christ is in your heart. This is why the Bible says that he gives you the desires of your heart because Christ is in your heart. And so you pray in line with Christ's heart with who Christ is. And God will give you the desires of your heart because now you're praying in line with who Christ is. And this is why we lay hands on people. This is why we go up to people because that's the desire of God's heart is to help the needy, to lay hands on the sick, to, to help those that are struggling and suffering and so we can give them who Christ is for them. So this is a reality that we need to learn. So it's about training on a daily. You are training the minute that your eyes wake up, the Holy Spirit has been given to you to teach you something. The question is, what is he teaching me when I'm going out on the streets? What is he teaching me when I'm encountering someone who's being rude? What is he teaching me when someone's getting upset? What is he teaching me when someone uh, spits on my face? What is he teaching me when someone's being rude and angry and vulgar? What is he teaching me? He's teaching you to walk out the character of Christ. And I know a lot of us get, get stuck on we just want to see the, the power of God move. But what good is the power of God moving if it hasn't moved you into who you are in Christ yet? And this is where true power lies. True power lies when the power is given, when it's given to the son or daughter of God who can steward who they are and they can take power and authority over every emotion, every fear, every stress, every anger. And now it's not about the carnal man or pepper, which we call the old man, who's ministering now. It's the new man. Because the old man has fear. The old man has anger. The old man has all the things that will keep you from walking out who you are in Christ. And the Holy Spirit does not train the old man. He does not train the flesh. He trains who you are, the real you. And the real you has no fear. The Bible tells us that he didn't give us a spirit of fear into bondage, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He didn't give you that spirit, which means you don't have that spirit of fear. So what is fear? Fear is not trusting God. When you don't trust who he is, that's when fear comes in. Because when you trust God, 
Perfect love casts out all fear. And I don't know if you know what all means. All means all. And so how would it feel to be able to walk out who you are in Christ with no fear of rejection? No fear that you're not going to get the miracle that you thought you were going to get. With the no fear of I don't know what to say. Or the no fear that God's not going to be for me here. The no fear, you will have no fear in any of these areas when you recognize that you are in Christ and you're being trained to get rid of these things mentally, physically, and emotionally. And Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells you, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So my question is, what are you telling your mind? What are you renewing your mind into? A child that's filled with power? A, a child that's filled with love? A, a, a child that's filled with mercy and peace? Like, what are you telling yourself? What is the narrative that you tell yourself on a daily? And that will determine the walk that you're going to walk out. And I tell people, the mind is the platform in which you run the race. So you might as well make sure that when you renew your mind, it's renewed to the point where you can actually run a smooth race. Not that you're not going to have issues, not that you're not going to have struggles, but it's not about the issues and the struggles. It's about the person who can handle and look at those issues and struggles through the right lens. That way they can handle them the right way. So it's not that you're frustrated. It's that you think you're frustrated. It's not that you're upset. It's that you believe you're upset. No one can make you angry. No one has that power to make you angry. No one. So, when you go out on the streets, when you go out today, if you go out today, just remember you're being trained. You're being mentored by the Holy Spirit to be like your master, to be like the Christ in every situation, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And one of the best things you could ever say is, I don't believe I can do this, Jesus, but you do. So I'll just put my trust and faith in the fact that you believe I can do this. Because, you know, it does say in, um, in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, which means that it's no longer your faith that moves mountains. It's his faith that moves mountains, which means that you trust the Christ in you, that he'll get it done. You lay hands on the sick and he'll do the rest. It's not about what you're thinking or what you're feeling because this is not ESP. We're not creating a healing with what we think. We're not creating a healing with what we feel. A healing comes when the word of God is administered and God honors that word. And that's where healing and miracles come from, from God honoring his word. And the best way to receive honor is to honor God and honor his word. That way we can all line up to his honor and make sure that we're honoring each other because that's what it's about. It's about we give honor, he receives honor, and we walk in honor. And that's what it's all about. Hey guys, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe to my channel. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this content, about this video. And uh, please don't be afraid to share this. And if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button, thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to turn your notifications on. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being a part of Royal Family International University. Don't forget to turn your notifications on.